Hi folks, Carol Ann here from SassyTownhouseLiving.com and today I'm super excited to be able to share with you a craft that I've been itching to make for quite some time now and this is the perfect time of year to be creating um, something with flower pots. So I got me some inexpensive clay pots from a local store. I'm in my craft section of my garage right now. And like I said, these clay pots you can get from anywhere, inexpensive clay pots. And I have some fusion paint that I'm going to be painting them with. And this color is called Picket Fence. And fusion paint is one of the premier painting companies out there. And I use them for most of my furniture refinishing and any type of furniture project that I'm working on. Uh, fusion paint is one of my favorites. The finish is always perfection. So got the fusion paint. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is I got these embellishments from Effects. And I will have all the information for you in my blog post as well as in the video description. And these embellishments are truly transformative. You can turn anything into a masterpiece with these embellishments. They come in all different shapes and sizes, all different types of styles. Here we have a gorgeous little bow, and these are almost rubber-like or silicone-like, but when you put them on anything, furniture, pots, I mean, they can literally go on anything in your home and they transform the look and feel of whatever it is that you're working on. They're, they're easy um, to apply moldings. So I have an array of different applique moldings here. And what I'm going to do is attach them to the flower pot after I'm done painting it. And I'm going to be using Rapid Fuse for that. This is the definite number one glue that you want to be using for any type of adhesive. It's fast setting and I've used it before on a table when I put my effects moldings on, which I'm gonna show you a quick snippet of right here in this video. So I apologize if it's a little dark in here. Um, but that's one of the embellishments that I put on the table and also on the legs. And when, after you glue them on, they become a part of the furniture and look like they were made with the furniture. I also have some gorgeous decorative bows on the front and then a repeat of the effects moldings on the legs and also on the side. So the end result is absolutely beautiful. I love effects moldings. And I'm super excited because I know they're going to turn out to be one of a kind masterpieces. I'm going to take this inexpensive clay pot and transform it into something very shabby chic and very adorable. So what you want to do here is use an inexpensive paintbrush. You don't really need an expensive paintbrush when you're painting clay pots. The cheap ones work just as good. And you want to get a good first coat on. So they definitely need a second coat, um, even with fusion paint, because 
you want to make sure that all of the clay color has been completely covered okay so I always like to use um, a second coat I mean you, you don't have to you can see the coverage it's pretty amazing with fusion but like I said I I like to throw a second coat on here because I really don't want any of that orange from the clay seeping through okay and basically it takes really fast to dry and then you can begin your second coat now here's the lid that I did just a few seconds ago and I do have a fan going as well in my workspace so that's definitely help helping to dry so um, I definitely want to put a second coat and once you put that second coat it doesn't have to be thick you can just um, lightly dab a second coat on here once you do that you'll see the amazing difference and then I can take my sanding block and start sanding away some of the areas that I do want the clay to show through and that's what's going to give it that cute little shabby chic it look that we're uh, after so there's my second coat and there's my first coat so you can see there's a difference and this will dry relatively fast as well and then once that dries I can do the inside of the pot too the pot lid that is and you always want to keep a wet rag a damp rag fusion paint comes off of your skin very nicely it's a water-based paint so you don't have to worry okay so now I'm gonna be doing a second coat on here and again nice thing I can throw this brush in the garbage when I'm finished because it was only a buck or two so it's no big deal um, not going to paint inside the entire pot I'm just going to paint up and around the inside of this rim because that'll be filled with dirt and you really want the plant to have access to the clay because that does absorb water and hold water for the plant so I don't like to personally seal them you can of course if you like but I like the soil to be able to touch the inside of the uh, clay pot so for me all I need to do is paint around where what's going to show So now I'm going to close my paint up and just wait a good 15-20 minutes before I start painting the inside of the pots. So I have all my pots painted. They're all dry and ready to go. And what I'm going to do now is just take a sanding block and very gently sand some of the edges just to give it that like shabby 
kind of look um, that I'm after. So let's get started doing that. And I just want um, very faint accenting. I don't want big gouges. So that's actually perfect. I just want it to look a little worn, a little weathered. Actually, that's going to be enough. I don't really want a lot of that. I'm not a huge chippy kind of person. Um, I don't really like chippy furniture that much. Um, I have loved some pieces, but I'm not a huge chippy kind of gal, so um, that's perfect. So just a few here and there, and that's the way I, I personally like it. You know, you can chip it as much as you like, but I think that's going to be good for me. I don't really see a need to do too much chipping underneath because it'll be on the ground. Nobody's really going to see it. So I'm not going to be doing all that work just for um, no one to be able to see it. So these two are perfect. And that's perfect. Like I said, I didn't want too much to be going on, but that's the perfect amount for me. So now for the exciting part of this project, um, I'm going to take my rapid fuse. I'm going to open it and show you what they look like. I love fleur de lis. Um, I have some beautiful birds on a tree branch and I think I'm going to use this one for a very large basket that I have so we'll put that one aside bows are my absolute favorite so let's get started with a bow love bows just love them and again effects appliques so let's rip one of these open Now, I'm going to let you see this close up. So, as you can see, it's, it's almost like a silicone... Excuse my hands, they're a nightmare. Um, it's almost like a silicone applique. It's bendable, pliable. You can use them around corners. Um, I, I showed you a clip of the table. I am in love with them. I just... Every time I see them, I'm left breathless because they add so much eloquence and beauty. You can put them around a mirror and, and like a decorative mirror. Um, there's so much you can do with them and I know they're going to look beautiful on my flower pot. So let's get started. And again, we're going to be using the Rapid Fuse and I highly recommend this. This works awesome. Best stuff ever. So let's get the party started. So what I like to do is get my applique and figure out, um, I guess we can put it on the smaller pot, figure out where I want it. So I just lay it on here for placement and kind of play with it just to see 
if I, you know, where I want it, like I said, you can put it like um, right up against there, up against the rim and glue it on there. Or you can center it and have the two ribbons hanging down or you can kind of move them up. So if you wanted the ribbons to span across, you can do that. And that's another reason why I love these because there's so much you can do with them. Um, I kind of like the ribbons down. Um, maybe down and in the center. Or in the upper center, I'm thinking. Just to give myself an idea. Yeah, see, I think that looks perfect. So what we're going to do... Is get our glue and we want to go around the edges because that's where it's going to meet so you want to lightly come around and again another reason I love this glue it's very fluid and it allows you to outline um, your appliques so easily and you want to make sure that you put just enough, not too much, and go all the way around until it's all covered. And then you can place it and don't worry about getting it on your fingers, it comes off. So you want to like hold it down for a few seconds just until it sticks. Don't worry about any excess glue because that's going to be painted. See? And then it sticks really fast and I give it a good push and I kind of like it uh, a little messy and not perfect. That's the way I like it. So don't worry about having to have things match because this is again supposed to be a little on the shabby chic side. So, um, but you saw how fast the glue adhered, you know, always put your cap back on too. You don't want it to dry out. And I love that. It's centered exactly where I wanted it. And like I said, it's this glue works so fast. Now, if you see an edge that's popping up here, no worries. Just take your glue, put a dab on there. Hold it down. Okay, so that's what I did. I just put some glue underneath there, push down on it, and voila. Perfect. So don't worry if you see any edges, um, like there's another loose one here. Just gonna put a little glue on there. Hold it down. And again, dries so super fast. And there we go. And don't forget too, the paint is going to add another layer of sealer over this. So you don't have to worry. And what we're gonna do is get ourselves a clean, cheap paintbrush and start to paint this. So I got a smaller brush this time because smaller surface. And uh, like I said, if you have glue on your fingertips, don't worry. You can just take a nail file and it comes right off in two seconds. It's no big deal. Okay, so this is all ready to go. It's nice and dry. And now I'm going to paint it.
and they're so easy to paint. I mean, that looks beautiful just as is, but we're not done because we're going to add another coat when this dries, just to make sure we got all the nooks and crannies. And then we're going to add some metallics to it. I also have some gold leaf that I'm going to be using too, just to give it some depth around the bow. And you'll see how I do that soon. So we're gonna let this dry and then put a second coat on. So here's the um, applique with two coats on it and as you can see it's on there very well it's nice and secure and that extra layer of paint over it even made the applique become more integrated and look like an actual um, the way that the pot was like designed so what I want to do right now is I love anything with gold um, leaf embellishments and I have some which is my all-time favorite um, this wax this gold leaf wax that I use for so many projects and as you can see I have a ton left because all you need is a very little bit it's definitely one of my favorites and I'll put the name of this in the blog post for you as well so what I want to do is start embellishing some of this bow with the gold and I'm going to use a dry brush technique so I'm going to dab my brush with some gold and then I'm going to like tap it in the cap just to make sure there's not too much and then very carefully just start to dab where I want the gold to accent and again, all you need is a very little bit and very gently start to tap. Now I want it to look a little messy, so wherever the brush hits is perfectly fine. I want it to have that shabby chic kind of look. And I still want some of the white and the bow to be detailed. So. I would say that that's the perfect amount. And I love the little flecks of gold around the pot too. Um, and the nice thing about this is, is say for instance, I wanted some gold flecks to be on top. I can also just tap and add some accenting of gold fleck across the top. I think that's enough. So I could put one on the back as well, but I think that just having the one in the front works perfectly fine. I don't think you need to have it in the back, especially if your plants are going to be up against the wall. Um, I just think that having one element is plenty. So now what you can do is um, just Wherever you want to use some gold flecking, you can do that. Put some on the base. And there we have a stunning masterpiece. I absolutely love the way this turned out. I'm going to put a plant in here and put it on my front porch. Um, if you had to buy a flower pot like this, it would, it would cost you well into $20 and $30. I've seen them in the store. And here you can just make your own for um, markedly less amount of money. And all you need is an inexpensive clay pot, some paint, and a gorgeous effects embellishment applique. Okay, so I have two other pots that I want to do. And I'm going to do them in the same exact fashion. So when I'm done, I will show all the images to you on my blog post as well as in this video. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. I absolutely love this technique. 
It's one of my favorites. And again, you can use this on mirrors. You can use this on furniture, baskets, anything that you want to embellish and make it look prettier. So thanks so much for watching. Please be sure to subscribe to my channel. We love sharing the best of everything here at Sassy Townhouse Living. And I think this is definitely one of the best of everything. <laughs> so please do subscribe and thumbs up this video. I would greatly appreciate that. And thanks so much for watching and have yourself a great and safe day.